first thing we're going to want to do is to change your file extensions to be enabled. You're going to double click my computer and click control panel. You're going to find your either tools icon or folder options icon. If you don't have folder options on this main page with all these, you should have tools. If you don't, you should have folder options. And so you'd click that. I'm going to bring this down here. And then if you had tools, you can just click folder options inside tools. Then you're going to click the view tab up here. And you're going to go through and find the hide file extensions for known file types line here. And if it's got a check mark like that, you're going to uncheck it. And then click apply and it will refresh your screen and then you can click OK and it might refresh your screen again. Now when you find it, see an image file somewhere, it'll look like this. The image name dot whatever type of image it is. This works with video files. It works with everything basically but folders. I keep this enabled because it helps me because I do a lot of things having to know the file extensions. But that's not important. By doing this, it enables you to change your PNG file or other file into a .jpg file without it actually being a JPG file. This way, you don't have to mess around with all the code in your template and because you can mess something up pretty bad in there. Mess the whole thing up, actually. But you can just always re-download the template if you really do mess something up. So, now that you have your image, mine is right here you're gonna open it up in a file program just to make I'm just opening it just to make sure you don't have to do this but just showing you that that's that's my old one I don't I don't have that one anymore but now you're gonna need to have that e on easy access within easy access you're gonna open up your FTP program um, if you don't have one already you can go download one from somewhere. Uh, if you have one already, it should work. Now, I'm just going to go over the basics of this because it can get very complicated. So, if you have a WordPress blog, or I, it might work with Blogger or other ones, I'm not sure. If you have one hosted on your own domain, then this should be easy. Um, if you don't, it, it'll be more difficult, and I'm not really sure how to do it like that because I don't have that but I'm sure you can find a tutorial somewhere on how to do that so just look that up and then come back to this now that you have your FTP program you're going to need to configure it to access your blog so I'm going to disconnect I'm sorry because I was already connected to my blog so now you're going to click file connect or if you have a box like this already open then just go right here and I'm going to click create site to make mine, that's how I do it in my FTP program. It, it might say new connection or something like that. Just click that. And your name is going to be what's going to show up right here, back here in your list of things. So you can just put whatever you'd like. I'm just going to put video just for now. And your IP address, uh, you should be able to find this or already know what it is. If you don't know how to do this, it's not hard to do. You can just look it up somewhere. I don't really want to explain it right now. There's sites. I'm just going to let you know that there are sites that tell you what your IP address is. So you can just go find that. And this is the IP address of your site, not of your computer. So I'm just going to put that in right now. And then you click Next. Your user ID, you should know what this is. It's basically your host name. Uh, don't get me wrong, this might not be the right thing. But for me, most of the time, it's my host name of where the site is hosted. Right now, I'm just going to put extreme dash days. You don't need to know where that is. Password is going to be, I'm just going to put extreme dash days again the account you can leave blank uh, I always click save password 
click next make sure it's on FTP and port 21 everything else you just leave default or you can just click finish if you have that option and then click finish or OK or whatever and it should show up right here um, you're gonna click that and click connect or you can double click it or you do it in your program you gotta figure that out now if you find files that show up like this on the side over here then you did it right if you did don't you've done something wrong and the most common mistakes to be made are you have the wrong IP address because you can mix up those numbers sometimes or you have the wrong username and or password for your site so double check those things if those if your this didn't show up um, now that you got it working you're gonna look through these files and find what you need this is how you navigate through if it's on a WordPress blog and you're using a theme for it. I'm going to click uh, WP Content. That's where mine happens to be. It should be the same for yours. So open that up and click the Themes uh, folder. And then find your theme name in your list of themes that you have installed on your site. If you don't have a theme on here, right on your site right now, you're going to click Default. But I don't really suggest you do that because if you mess around with that, you can um, kind of ruin your site. So I'd suggest using a theme. And plus, the default one doesn't look very nice, really, in my opinion. It's all right, but I think there's lots of themes that look better. So just look through that real fast and find one. Find it. If it's got a number after it or whatever, that's all right. Just find the main thing and open that and then ignore everything else here and find the folder named images open that up quickly scan through these files in here and look for one that says header or banner or something along those lines that you would know right away is going to be your banner image and I don't have anything called banner but I do have something called header right here and just click this to go over onto your computer mine's on my desktop right now you can see right here um, bring it over using this once you have it selected use that and bring it over to your desktop or wherever you'd like and just open it up in a file program I mean an image fo program so that you can just make sure that it's the right file that you're overwriting or changing once you have that over here on your desktop it would look like this for me it's gonna look like this and I'm going to right click on the name of that and click rename and I'm gonna press control C to copy the name I'm gonna find my other image file which for me is this one but for you it will be a different one your your new banner that you want it to be you're gonna right click click rename and then click control V or paste and rename it to that now that you have that I'm just gonna bring it up here again and open this and find it on your desktop or wherever you had it. Mine's right here. Make sure you back up these files before you overwrite them and then just take this, your new image file, and click the arrow to go back over and just click that and it should upload it onto your site. Now you're going to go to your site real quick and click the refresh button a couple times, wait a couple minutes if it still doesn't show up, and if it still doesn't show up after at probably five minutes maximum then you did something wrong and you're gonna wanna put the original file that you changed back in there just to just to be sure that you didn't mess the wrong thing up and so if you don't see it right away just keep refreshing it or come back in a couple minutes and make sure and if it's there then it's all good and you've got your new custom banner or image header or header or whatever you'd like to call it and I think that concludes this tutorial